Howdy, Howdy Zach. Zach. So, so we, we meet, meet again. again. Such, Such a, a touching, touching reunion. reunion. Like, like a, a little, little boy, boy who was given up for adoption, adoption finally, finally reuniting with his true parents. Uh, look, look, even, even little, little Willie here is beside himself, himself with joy. Kason! Ah! <sighs> <sighs> oh, oh dear. <laughs> Damn it! Damn it. Ah! I'm, I'm gonna, gonna kill you! you. <laughs> hey, let her go! What the hell's gotten into you? Jeez, are you okay? <coughs> that should do it. Well, no turning back now. How should we clean this up? I'm searching the room. This room is pure insanity. But I can't let it shake me. Why did you come here, Aaliyah? Remember the real reason you decided to investigate Morgan's house in the first place. We came here to find a missing girl. Patricia Clarkson isn't here, and he's done nothing except narrowly skirt the thin line of legality in all the right ways. He's so abnormal. How can there not be a single shred of evidence against him? Come on, Agent Jones. I know you're hiding something. Uh, what are you talking about? You've been watching him for four and a half years, haven't you? Can you really stand here and tell me that you never saw a single one of the strange signs I'm picking up on now? Uh, what signs? Deadly premonitions. Preparations for kidnapping or terrorist activities. Sexual depravity, violent tendencies, self-mutilation or even just contacting a specific person periodically. Nope. Nada. He doesn't fit any of that. You think I'd really ignore something that obvious? I may be a schlub, but I'm still an FBI agent. Then why didn't you do anything about this room? Or did you merely choose to ignore his abnormal proclivities? You want to know what I did? I did my damn job! End of story! I was outside the entire time. How do you expect me to notice a room like this from out there? It's as simple as that. At least it was, until you dragged me into this whole mess. Don't blame me just because your big investigation ended up leading nowhere. Then tell me the truth. After seeing this room, can you really say that man is in his right mind? He kept this room a total secret from you for over four and a half years. No normal human is capable of such a feat. Only a true genius. Or a true monster. Can you really guarantee that he won't try anything if we just let him go here? Well, uh... Then you need to help me. Find some sort of evidence that we can use to make him reveal what he's plotting. Okay, okay. Daniel Clarkson. The file said his only real talent was his ability to pick up women. But when I spoke with him in the warehouse, he seemed dignified, like a truly accomplished man. Marrying into the Clarkson family must have put him through a lot. 
Why do you think Jethro here survived? Why? I mean, doesn't he look like the kind of guy who'd die first in a horror movie? He married into the Clarkson family. He didn't possess Clarkson blood, so he had nothing to do with Helena Doman's plan. The blood purge thing? But if that was all there was to it, then Helena Doman wouldn't have killed anyone but Clarkson's, right? Yet a ton of the Clarkson gang members died, along with Sheriff Woods. <sighs> Doesn't add up. She did whatever it took to achieve her goals. She'd kill if the plan required it. But killing people outside of the Clarkson family was never a priority. Her ultimate goal was to cut off the Clarkson bloodline. Maybe he was always meant to be an assistant to the goddess of fertility. What, like a servant? He was the kind of person who was most in his element when he had someone to serve. Even afterwards, he let Patricia take over the estate, while he became her assistant. As soon as he settled into his role, the townspeople started to respect him. Now they practically revere him, and he's even earned himself a nickname. One-Armed Danny. So you think his life played out exactly the way Professor R planned it to go? Talk about tragic. A photograph of Patricia Clarkson. I thought she was imprisoned right here in this room, but there was no one here. Where could she be then? I was so positive, but she isn't here. There is something about this room, though. Agent Jones, what do you think? Me? I'm not as smart as you. Why are you even asking me? Are you hiding something? <laughs> of course not. Knock it off. Me? Hiding something? Ha! <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Come on. I got nothing to hide. I thought I would find answers in this room. I thought that Patricia would be here. But I was wrong. This room is only filled with photos of people related to the case and the handiwork of a madman. Feels like I'm wandering through a heavy mist. Why is Morgan showcasing those women's photos? And that bed? After she lost her family in the Lucare incident, she went to go live at the Clarkson estate. And once she grew up, she assumed control of their empire seemingly without any hesitation. She must be strong. How did she eventually come to accept her cursed blood and the fate it placed on her shoulders? Sheriff Melvin Woods. I never met him myself, but his face makes him look like a very nice guy. His background and childhood didn't have any red flags either. Yet we're supposed to believe that he was one of the masterminds behind that entire incident? Is this supposed to be the altar from the site where Lise Clarkson's body was found? Why would he want to replicate that inside of his own home? There's no way this man is sane. The one who took her in after the incident was Daniel Clarkson, the next in line to succeed the Clarkson family. He's the one that ended up raising her from that point onwards. Isn't fate strange? In the end, two people who were completely unrelated by blood ended up inheriting that house. Yeah, you're right. But sometimes I wonder, what is family anyway? Go back far enough, we're all strangers to one another. We're talking countless generations, marriages and birth, you know. Humans love to deify the rules they create. It's almost like that's been an unwritten law from the very start. If you loved someone from the bottom of your heart, would you ever be able to marry someone else? Or kill for them? Whoa, uh, what are we talking about? I never heard of any kind of motive like that in any other murder case. I just keep feeling like we're being fed a story that he made up in his mind. <sighs> True. Honestly, without having experienced what that's like, I can't really say what I'd do. 
But I'd never try and force love to happen if it didn't seem like it was meant to be. There are 3.5 billion women on this planet. There's got to be more than one specific person who anyone can fall deeply in love with, right? But what if we were talking about pizza, not women? You just discovered the perfect ultimate pizza, but you aren't allowed to take even a single bite unless you kill someone for the cook. Have you ever loved someone with all your heart? <laughs> what kind of person do you take me for? That's my line. Why did Lise have to die first? What is this? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. This room paints such a bizarre picture. But upon closer look, I can see some strange sort of pattern to it all. Was Morgan trying to recreate something with all this? If so, there must be a reason for all of these weird and hideous things. A woman so beautiful she felt like she could make it as an actress in Hollywood. And this is how she ended up. Sometimes it seems like God abandoned us humans a long time ago. I feel it more and more with each new case. I've seen the bedrooms of countless violent criminals, but this one is on a completely different level. It's beyond insane. I've seen the bedrooms of his beyond. Rope tied around a lighting fixture. What could it mean? Yeah, uh, uh, you sure it's okay to press that? Won't know until we try. Hey, it's Woodstock. Look, a peace sign. Love and peace, man. Even I can figure out what this is from. It's Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Grateful Dead, and Led Zeppelin. But I shouldn't have to explain it to a music nut like you, right? That isn't a peace mark. It's upside down. You don't need to be a music nut to see that. Who says that's the top part? If you're looking from Lisa's head, this is the top part, making it a big, fat peace mark. No, this is the ground. Where's your proof? The red seeds. Seeds go in the ground, right? That makes this wall the bottom. Lisa's head is clearly at the top. Period. <sighs> also, Agent Jones... Led Zeppelin never played at Woodstock. When Helen Adoman attacked the estate, he just happened to be somewhere else. Whether it was through luck or simple coincidence, that's how he managed to survive. When Helena Doman returned home, someone must have let her inside. You think that was her brother-in-law, Daniel? I don't know. <sighs> well, Alligators did chomp his arm off. He probably had it in for old man PJ, too. But, you know, 
I don't think he had anything to do with this. Why not? You're making it out to be more complicated than it really is. That's always the problem with people like you. Too smart for your own good. Just get to the point. <sighs> Professor R marched straight through the front door to the mansion. She arrived right at her destination using the quickest route possible without having to undergo a single security check. I know. My question is, how was she able to do that? Because she's family. It doesn't matter if PJ disowned her. He never stopped loving his son. A father would never abandon his child, no matter how much they failed to fulfill his expectations. That's what being a parent is all about. Don't look at me like that. I know, I know, I don't have a son myself, but I have a father. He's still back in my hometown, managing the printing plant my grandfather started. He'll be turning 80 soon. He wanted me to take over the place, but as you can see, I'm out here. But I know how this whole thing works. Even though I haven't seen him in forever, the minute I go home, he'll welcome me with warm, open arms. Galena Clarkson went to California to become an actress, but things never took off for her, so she eventually returned home. Then she murdered her own daughter and ended up like this. Where did she go wrong? She did manage to appear in a few movies, right? Not as any characters with actual names. And never with much clothes on. So that's the only value they saw in her, huh? Sorry, that was insensitive. It's an everyday occurrence in that world. She was also bullied a lot. Bullied? How? They'd cut up her costumes, her scripts, and even her own clothes. Everywhere she went. Then after three years of that, her stylist chopped off a chunk of her hair. By accident. Are you kidding me? I did a little investigating on this. In the end, a self-titled Big Cheese producer tricked her. She almost ended up going into porn. <sighs> Not hard to imagine what would have happened after that. One witness said that after returning to Lucare, she refused to use scissors to cut anything. What's that? A hunting trophy. A brown bear. With a dragonfly eye patch. Why is it smoking a cigar? It's probably supposed to represent Philip J. Clarkson's body. And the elk is? Helena Doman. So that's why it's got such good taste in fashion. And this one is Galena Clarkson? Why did he want to line up corpses that were killed in different places, all together in a single room? Red seeds? He's representing a human with a hunting trophy made from an animal. I feel like I'm looking at a piece of modern art done in really bad taste. He was going back over the Lucare case together with the Greenvale case. Just as I thought, these two cases are connected, but in a different way from what I originally thought. Anna Graham, the first victim of the Greenvale case. Her body was found hanging from a tree, like a goddess being worshipped in a sanctuary. Meanwhile, Lise Clarkson was found on the bank of a river in an area that had been fashioned into an altar. The person who gruesomely ended the life of that young woman must be brought to justice. I completely agree. They both still had their whole lives ahead of them. The Lucare case and the Greenvale case. According to my investigation, the one key that links both cases is Francis Zack Morgan. But if we look at the cases from his point of view, we see one more connection. The red seeds are also present in both cases. I believed that he was the one who brought them to both towns. But maybe...
No. Never mind. He took in the daughter of the man who murdered his beloved wife and daughter. That's quite the feat. <laughs> sure seems like our friend Daniel here was just destined to suffer. He crossed the entire continent and married into the Clarkson family, all for the sake of the woman he loved. But then the love of his life became a drug addict and ended up murdering their very own daughter. And she too was murdered as part of her big brother's conspiracy. Finally, in order to prove that he could take responsibility for the family, he gave up his right arm to his father-in-law, who got blown to bits soon afterwards. And to add insult to injury, all the inheritance went to PJ's secret heir. If I had to go through all that, I'm pretty sure I'd go crazy. I don't know. What do you mean? He found someone he loved so much, he moved across the entire continent just to be with her. That's beautiful. It also seems that he was eventually able to make an identity for himself and Lou Carre as well. After I found his daughter's body, I interrogated him for a bit. When I told him we were going to do an autopsy on her body, he didn't react violently in any way. I remember him looking relieved and tired. Kind of like someone who'd just woken up from a coma. She planned a string of murders all in order to restore the Clarksons to their former glory, right? Yeah. According to Morgan's story. Matches up with the files, too. But the only proof of that is the confession she privately gave to Morgan just before she died. Galena Clarkson was also murdered immediately after she confessed. Don't you think it's all a little too convenient? Well, story-wise, yeah. And the sacrifices. None of the FBI's official records contain an example of an actual human sacrifice. Aside from the cases that Francis Zack Morgan handled, that is. There are tons of examples of animal sacrifice, though. And remember the witch hunts back in the Middle Ages? Meaning? Meaning there are always exceptions to the rule. And Morgan alluded to the existence of some sort of journal, right? I think he said he read it in Professor R's lab. If we could find that, maybe this would all become easier to swallow. The report didn't mention anything about a journal. And if it truly did exist, it surely would have been submitted as evidence. Unless he tried to cover it up on purpose. Or... Unless the journal never existed in the first place. Exactly. He was taught how to rule as a child, never confided in anyone, and married for purely political reasons. Then he prospered so much that he became powerful enough to rule an entire town on his own. But in the end, his own child betrayed him and ended his entire clan in a series of violent deaths. If that was your life, how would you look back on it? Yeah, beats me. I wasn't born into a rich family, nor was I ever taught how to rule. And for what it's worth, I've also never knocked up a young ex-actress. But I guess the one thing we can say is that any good life needs balance. Get too hung up on one thing, and you lose sight of everything else. And if you betray someone, you'll get betrayed too. Someone thinks they can step all over people and then live out the rest of their life in peace. They're fooling themselves. We always get to see how those people end up in our line of work. In the end, they die horrible deaths. That is why pizza is the only thing I trust. Pizza never betrays you. This case took place in Lucare, and centered around the Clarksons. Oppressive authority, cross-purposes, madness, and love. But Katrina took the truth along with many innocent lives and buried it all at the bottom of the swamp. But there's one truth that can never be washed away. This all started with the death of a young girl. Why did she believe what Professor R told her? The whole blood purge story. There's no way anyone in their right mind would ever believe that. 
You got a point. No matter how badly all the bullying must have broken her heart, I just find it too hard to believe. Don't you? Yeah, but you shouldn't think too hard about it. Why not? Human beings don't make sense. We always do things that can't be explained with common logic, especially when it concerns our parents, children, and siblings. Mm. -mm. That doesn't satisfy me. No matter how irrational an action may be, I want to know exactly why that person made such an irrational decision. Otherwise, what hope do we have? You're never going to be in a situation where everything makes perfect sense. Just stop sticking your nose so deeply into everything. That's my advice, as an old guy who's lived twice as long as you. You and I are nothing alike. You decided to give up on your life and spend the rest of your time on Earth sitting around and playing Sudoku. <sighs> the 16-year-old girl who was murdered in Lucare in 2005. After that, she remained frozen for 14 years, waiting for someone to discover her. I was the one who found her which means I have a duty to lay her soul to rest. Everyone thinks that the principal thing to the tree is the fruit, but in point of fact, the principal thing to it is the seed. Now I know why Lise Clarkson was murdered first. Lise's death was Professor R having second thoughts. According to Morgan, her plan was to perform parricide and filicide, then commit suicide. Those were the three deaths necessary to complete the ritual, remember? Which means she technically could have killed Patricia first. That would have been the best way to delay any interference from the Clarksons themselves. The reason she didn't kill Patricia first is because Lena was actually following a different plan inside her own mind. Or perhaps she merely changed her plan as she followed through with it. At some point, new emotions started to take root within her. She had second thoughts about something. And in order to shake those off, she used Galena to kill Lise first. In order to cut off any possible escape. But that only made her plan move ahead quicker than she could have ever imagined. Which forced her to rush right up to the end with those misgivings always in the back of her mind. Huh? Uh, wait, hold on. Yeah, you lost me. What are you talking about? In other words, at some point, Helena Doman decided that she wanted to make Patricia the next heir. The blood purge wasn't for the goddess of fertility. It was for their daughter, Patricia. Wait, are you saying Helena knew from the start that Sheriff Woods would die with candy? That's the only explanation I can think of. Huh. Remember, this is only assuming that everything Morgan told us was true. Until I can trust that man, this is all nothing more than conjecture. Uh, considering how insane this all is, it sounds perfectly believable to me. Francis Zack Morgan. Remember me? Oh, cat got your tongue. Understood. You know why I'm here, don't you? Surely, you must know what this means. To commemorate our reunion, allow me to give you another oracle. The contract, once signed, will last for eternity. But only in the presence of true love. Did you hear that? Good. It's been a while since I felt this. You know... There's hardly anyone in this era who can see me like you can. And they've been dropping like flies since you first came to see me. Breaks my heart. Hmm. We don't have much. 
much time. Do you have any questions for me? Excellent. You pass. You haven't changed, Francis Zack Morgan. But that question isn't for me to answer. Go and see it with your own eyes. Oh, time's up. We'll have to finish this during our next reunion. <laughs> This is bad. Agent Jones, what is this referring to? Avery Smith kidnapped Patricia Clarkson and escaped. Avery Smith? The vault manager? Why would he kidnap Patricia? Tell me what's going on right now. Well... Answer me, Jones. I made a deal with Morgan. Back when he took me to the bathroom. What? What? Morgan said something to me. If we want to find Patricia, we need to look at Avery Smith. Have you lost your mind? <sighs> what he said made sense. Ever since 2005... Avery's been working deep inside that cold storage warehouse. He was also arrested in the past for getting too friendly with Lise Clarkson. And after Katrina, he apparently worked on renovating the warehouse for free. What if that allowed him to freely modify the warehouse as he pleased? That would explain why her body remained missing for 14 whole years. Then, I did a little check and found out that he never went back to work after Christmas vacation ended. So what? Why would you trust him? Uh, I don't. I just decided it was worth investigating, that's all. So, I sent two agents to Avery's house without telling anyone. I just called in a favor from an old friend in the New Orleans branch. No one gave you clearance for that. You think you can just... But what if Morgan's telling the truth? If he is, we're both going to look like total clowns. Clowns who went barging into a former agent's house on completely unfounded suspicions. HQ will have a field day with us. They'll string us up as the two dumbest agents to have ever graced the field. I just wanted to take some precautions. And besides, if he is lying, it's still no skin off our backs, right? If things work out, we'll end up solving a difficult case that's been driving everyone crazy. Imagine that. You and me, just the two of us, solving a case like this. I'll be able to jump ship on this crappy job. And you'll be able to freely investigate all things San Rouge, just like you've always wanted. Besides, you know that Morgan is Director Abraham's favorite. Even if we get into some sort of trouble, if Morgan testifies to Abraham's for us, we'll totally be in the clear. I don't care. This isn't the way things are supposed to be done. Well, I'm sorry, but I had no other choice. You were so engrossed in this, and come on, you know how I am. <sighs> Besides, saving the hostage should take priority above all else. There's no time for squabbling. We need to find Avery Smith no matter what it takes. <clears throat> but how? Eh, uh, well... Thanks to your heroic maneuvers, we just lost our suspect. I know, but... I know how to find him. I should be able to see the other world the way I am now. Just let me go, please. Morgan? It's okay, my fairy. I know I can convince them. Aaliyah Davis. She's on edge as she should be. Who wouldn't be after seeing this room?
Simon's lost in thought. What will his next move be? Will he follow the plan? Or... Definitely not the best thing for them to see right now. If I saw that during an investigation, I wouldn't be able to stay calm and listen to someone either. I don't have much time left. I'm pretty sure that's why I can see the other world now. I'd lost that sense ever since the Greenvale incident, but it's back now. Please, will you just trust me? Come on, Simon. You'll trust me, won't you? Uh, what? No, Agent Jones. Remember the warning I gave you at the very beginning? You can't let him take control of the conversation. Yeah, I, I know. I know. Please, Halea Davis, let me go. This is our case to finish. No, you aren't an agent anymore. But you don't know how to find him. Neither of you ever could. Oh, I'll find him. I swear on my pride as an active agent that I won't give up until I do. That won't get you anywhere. It's beyond you. Shut up! You think we can't find him, but you can. Just how stupid do you think we are? If you want us to believe you, then it's about time you showed us some proof. A lot of times passed since I last saw Patricia. If I hadn't gone back to Lucare, she probably would have never been kidnapped. I dragged her back into her cursed destiny. Helena Doman, aka Professor R. Her complicated life only added more complications to the Lucare case. She's the one who gave the Red Tree a chance to take root inside her. A strange man was stalking Lise, and Patricia resembled Lise so much that I once confused them for a moment, meaning it would be no surprise if the same man went after Patricia. Why didn't I think of that until now? You said that she was the mastermind behind the tragedies in Lucare. That her convictions about the Clarkson bloodline are what started it all. Yes, that's right. She instigated her younger sister into killing her own niece. Then she committed suicide immediately after killing her father, hoping that Sheriff Woods would be able to complete her plan. How could one call such an unpredictable series of events a plan? And as we saw, Sheriff Woods chose a fate that was completely different from what she envisioned. No, he didn't. In the end, things went exactly as she planned. What do you mean? At a certain point, she realized that her plan was wrong. So, she tried to adjust things, using me as a pawn. But then, the unexpected happened. She and I both underestimated what Avery was capable of. That's why I'm here right now trying to convince you, in order to save Patricia's life. If your story is true, then why did Avery Smith kidnap Patricia? Patricia resembles Lise. I even got them confused once, and Lise reported being stalked by a ten-foot man. That's Avery Smith? Exactly. But he's only 6'7 at best. His physical characteristics don't match the person you're talking about. I once concluded the very same thing, but now I know. That was definitely Avery. He protected Lisa's body for the past 14 years, until you discovered his sleeping beauty. So after losing Lisa's body, he kidnapped Patricia as a replacement? Th that's ridiculous. Is that really what you think happened? Even if Avery did possess that sort of mentality, it doesn't make sense. If Lise was really that important to him, he would have tried to steal her back. Not now, maybe. But certainly after she was buried. 
Would you be able to go on worshipping a goddess who had been defiled by so many hands? That ice was a barrier, a shield that separated the divine from our world. Hey, Bell. Your hypothesis was pretty much on the mark. Last week, I went back to Lucare. Then I bought a used car and got on a train in Trenton. But not for the reason you think. I wasn't stalking Patricia. And I'd never try to kidnap her. Then why would you go there? Why would you risk so much, especially since you knew that you were under surveillance? Because, once again, I'm chasing Saint Rouge. Saint Rouge? Even after I quit the FBI, I continued to study the red trees on my own. And now, I've come to the conclusion that those red seeds and Saint Rouge both come from the same roots. I also found proof that someone's inherited the original recipe. That's why I flew to Lucare, to confirm my suspicions. But I was more powerless than I ever could have imagined. I couldn't move like I used to. No badge, no gun. So, after wandering aimlessly around town, I swallowed down my torment and my weakness and left. You expect me to believe that? I know you've got it in you. What's that supposed to mean? You found Lise Clarkson's body. The one thing I never did. And only a few days after discovering the body, you came to visit me. You should be fully capable of discerning that what I'm telling you is the truth. Talking much about oneself can also be a means to conceal oneself. You can't trick me. That's the eerie drum that Pastor Tyrone gave to me. The pressed flower I took from the hotel bathroom is still right on top, and it hasn't even wilted. Maybe it really was blessed with some sort of holy power. Nah. What is this drum? Please don't tell me it was a tool they planned to use for the blood purge. Sharp eyes as usual, Belle. No. It was part of an even darker ritual. I can't even bring myself to say its name. It was far more important to our case. And far more horrible, if you can believe it. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, that's just a drum. <laughs> a drum made from three empty cans, animal skins, and a fragrant pressed flower. Like I said, what is it? Maybe it's a souvenir? What? You expect me to believe that? Avery showered me with key words. Smarty Pants Scientist, Research, and Lab. Why didn't I pick up on any of it? If shallow prejudice is what prevented me from taking his words seriously, then I truly am a failure as an agent. No, I know why. I was still immature as a human being. The man who built up the Clarkson Empire, he must have been able to withstand unfathomable pressure and accusations while constantly spilling human blood. The more I learned about him, the more I felt like he was completely beyond my reach. He possessed an impeccable mind. I can still remember that even now. You said that someone inherited the Saint Rouge recipe, didn't you? Is that someone Avery Smith? It has to be. Avery used to help Professor R do research in secret. What? Well, that wasn't in the report. I only realized it just now. The moment I spilled my coffee on the floor. Avery revealed that he was helping with some sort of research. <sighs> but at the time... 
I let his confession go in one ear and out the other. Now that I look back on it, I realize it was solid proof that he was helping her produce San Rouge. What makes you think that? He had free access to the deepest parts of the cold storage warehouse. Oh. Wait. Uh, meaning... Saint Rouge needs to be produced in an extremely cold environment. Exactly. Aaliyah Davis. You already considered this possibility, didn't you? That's why you investigated the cold storage warehouse as soon as you got to Lucare, in order to locate where Saint Rouge was being made. Then, you came across Lisa's body by pure chance. Leah's smart. She's top class. Even within the FBI. She must understand that what I'm saying makes sense. The problem is that she's too smart. The way she is now, she'll refuse to accept anything that can't be explained with logic. The Greenvale case. It awoke me. And also stole my irreplaceable best friend from me. If it weren't for that case... I might still be an FBI agent, but the case dealt such a blow to me, it shattered all those dreams. Melvin's cheerful exterior betrayed all the darkness that lurked within him. His happy-go-lucky personality was probably just his way of coping with reality. It all makes sense. Now I understand why he kept insulting Lena. Melvin wasn't the Fool King. What? Many different characters pop up in Lena's journal, and I mistook one of them for someone else. What are you talking about? After Simon hit me and I fainted, I had a dream. Now I'm convinced. I'm the Fool King. The Fool King was always meant to be an outsider who suddenly arrived in Lucare. And the man she felt a need to eliminate wasn't me, but Avery. Lena realized her plan was on the verge of falling apart. She also guessed that I would be able to save Patricia from Melvin. The one worry that remained in her heart was leaving Patricia behind and how her life would play out from that point on. Especially since she would be left behind with Avery. A large, childlike man who's beyond anyone's control. She wrote that journal entry hoping that I, the Fool King, would be capable of stopping Avery. And she wrote it in a specific way in order to try and rouse me to action. Lena and Melvin both entrusted me with their daughter. So please, just let me go. It's my duty to protect her. Who do you think benefited most from the Greenvale case? <sighs> no one benefited from it. Many lives were lost. That's all. You really believe that? Everyone who survived was overcome with sadness. Scarred for life. Without exception? Without exception. Isn't that right, my fairy? I feel like you're the one person who benefited from the case. You were able to add a new chapter to your stunning career and earned unshakable trust from the Chief. That's what allows you to go on using his intel network as you please, even though you're retired. Are you seriously suggesting that? Sickness is destroying my body. I feel like I'm on the verge of losing my mind, yet somehow... I'm unable to forget the cases connected to those seeds, whittling down what's left of my life, chasing them. You really think I'm doing all this for nothing but self-interest? Is that really what you're saying? I understand what you're trying to say, but it's too perfect. It's too perfect, just like that report of yours. How could you come to such a detailed conclusion after spending years shut up in this room? It doesn't make sense. The only possible explanation is that you're bending the narrative in the direction you want it to go. 
Why do you think I left the field for two years after Greenvale? That case cost me not only my best friend, but also my special talent. I never thought I'd lose something like that. But ever since then, I've been unable to solve cases using that method. <gasps> Metaphysical offender profiling! I tried everything I could think of to regain my lost talent, but it never came back to me. That's why I quit working for the FBI. And without anywhere else to go, I simply spent my days seeking truth. Searching for an answer I'd never find. <sighs> so, time continued to cruelly pass me by. Until finally, a disease started eating away at my body. I thought it was all over for me. <coughs> but about half a year ago, I finally reached my conclusion. Everything started with the red seeds. He and I encountered these seeds long before we reached Greenvale. Under the seething, mind-melting sun of Louisiana. Then, for some reason, in the beginning of December, I finally regained my talent. And instantly, I could see the other world again. Get it? Through allowing the cancer cells to ravage my body, I regained the power to travel to the other side. This is the only answer, Aaliyah Davis. Truth is a surprise, born from coincidence and an unknown power. What came first? The seed or the fruit? Who cares? To me, those red seeds are the beginning and the end of it all. Melvin, neither York nor I were able to uncover the darkness within you. How did we miss it? We couldn't even save you. Are you and Candy finally happy now on the other side? Or are you still suffering? trapped by the bonds of the red tree. Her actions shocked me the most. How could a mother ever kill her own daughter? But I know the answer now. The red tree. The red tree can take control of everything. It's what leads us into the mouth of madness. She was the first perpetrator in the case. And technically, she was also the first victim. Maybe... Well, it's impossible to ask her now, but... Maybe she really did love her daughter with all her heart. And so... She was afraid. Afraid of what would happen if her daughter did end up inheriting the Clarkson estate. It was fear or something like it. That's what let the red tree inside. That's still no reason to kill someone, especially not your own daughter. I know. Of course I know that. <sighs> and I'm sure that deep down, she did too. I made a promise with Melvin. He entrusted me with Patricia. All he had left. But immediately after you solved the case, you sent her to the Clarksons and left town. Isn't that right? You let go of her a long time ago. So you have no right to step back into the picture now. That... was the wrong thing to do. I was... young. But now... I have the chance to right my wrong. You can't be serious. You can barely stand up. Hey, Aaliyah! I know, Agent Jones. I know I'm stepping over the line here. I just want to make it clear that we can't trust a word of what he says. Two bizarre cases derailed your life. It must have been extremely painful. You have my deepest condolences, but that doesn't put you in the clear. You're still a suspect. A suspect? For what? Patricia isn't here. The murders of Sheriff Melvin Woods and Candy Woods. 
Their bodies were never recovered. Katrina carried them away, along with many other lives. Aside from that report you wrote, there's nothing that proves your innocence. Hey, let's not jump to conclusions here. Oh, I'm not. I also suspect there's a possibility that he murdered individuals connected to other cases that he's worked on. The Greenvale report bears the same inconsistencies as this one. And both cases are filled with victims whose deaths were never witnessed. Stop. Don't say another word. If you so much as mention her name. If I mention it, then what? You will pay. Twinkle, my fairy. Don't look at me that way. I know how talented she is. I completely agree with you on that one. But I can't hand everything off to her just yet. Can you just let me get my way one last time? <sighs> Bell. No. Special Agent. Aaliyah Davis. You're exceptionally talented, I admit it. You found Lisa's body, then discovered the red seeds all on your own. You even noticed that there was someone else in this room. You've got amazing intuition. You're a hunter with an extremely keen sense of smell. But you still can't perceive the other world the way you are now. That's all there is to it. Simon, look inside that trash can. Huh? The trash can? It's right behind you. Then you'll know for sure that I'm telling the truth. We told you not to touch the sanctuary! What is this? What's on that receipt? What is it, Agent Jones? F. K. Contact a local agent and have them investigate Avery Smith's home. There are still agents investigating the Lucare area, right? Trust me, that's where Patricia Clarkson is. Trust you? Where's your proof? Ask Aaliyah Davis. Ask her about the name of the person who tipped her off. What do you mean? You're from Chicago. And you love pizza, right? Especially deep dish pizza, smothered in cheese. What does this have to do with pizza? Just ask her. And ask her why she decided to take this case in the first place. Got it? Pizza will never betray you. So you need to trust it, too. How could you have known that I would come here with her? I didn't. I just bet on you. God damn it. Hey! Tell me what's going on right now, Agent Jones! <clears throat> Thank you, my fairy. Car key, Simon. <clears throat> Let me go! <clears throat> Don't worry. <clears throat> just trust in the pizza. <clears throat> I'm the anonymous tipper, F.K. Eh, it's on the corner of 3rd Street, a 69 Pontiac GTO. You've got excellent taste. Lend me your gun, too. Agent Jones, don't you see what you're doing here? This is a severe obstruction of justice. You're violating the FBI code. Yeah. Aaliyah, I know, but 
pizza will never betray me. Pizza? Tell Abrahams to prepare a private jet for me at the airport. I know Robert won't turn his back on me. Wait, Morgan, are you serious? The Chief would never lend out a private jet to a civilian like... Like, um... I have to leave you for a bit, my fairy. They'll be fine. They'll figure it all out. York, can you hear me? I'm going to go finish the job you started. That makes us even, okay? Hmm. York, she really is a genius agent. She's probably going to end up being an even better agent than we were. She just needs more experience under her belt. She's still only pursuing the world she can see with her naked eye. She needs to experience more frustration. She needs to strengthen herself. <laughs> On the other hand, Simon's much smarter than he looks. No wonder he was able to go on watching us for four and a half years. All that struggling under the surface paid off in the end. <laughs> Do you want to know why he decided to start trusting me? It's simple. It's all because of the name I used to send the tip to the FBI. It's the name of that pizza parlor, the Chicago-style place with those trademarked crimson boxes. Franklin's Kitchen. FK. Yet again. They've got the best deep dish pizza in the area. Both Simon and I love that place. That's why I told him, pizza will never betray you. Will it, York? <laughs>